Hi, and welcome to the 2020 Women of Distinction virtual event. I'm Sylvia Acevedo, CEO of Girl Scouts of the USA. Thank you for joining us tonight. Now, these are unprecedented times, but there is one constant, which is Girl Scouts. For over 108 years, Girl Scouts has been there in times of crisis and turmoil, and we are stepping forward with new initiatives to help girls, their families, their communities to connect, explore, find comfort, and to take action. I invite you to join me this evening as we come together virtually and honor some amazing women and young women leading their communities as a force for good. Tonight, you'll also hear about how Girl Scouts of River Valleys is helping girls during this pandemic and how you can make a difference by investing in girls to change the world. Now, across the country, Girl Scout councils are working in new ways to create virtual programs to keep our girls engaged, connected to their communities, and strengthening the ties of sisterhood. And now, without further ado, let's sit back, relax, and take it back to Minnesota. Thank you, Sylvia, for that warm welcome. And to everyone watching at home, thank you for joining us for our first virtual Women of Distinction event. I'm Roxanne Battle. And as MC of Women of Distinction for five years now, I'm so grateful to be able to be with all of you tonight virtually as we raise funds to support girls. I hope tonight will be an interactive evening. I invite you to share your comments of where you're from, what troop you're from, and while you're at it, snap and share a pic. We'd love to see how you are celebrating Girl Scouts River Valleys and the Women of Distinction from the comfort of your home. I'm grateful tonight to be joined by the Girl Scouts of River Valley CEO, Tish Bozier. Hello, Tish. Hi. Even from six feet apart, it's always great to be with you, Roxanne. Thank you. And it's so great to be with all of you watching at home. Now more than ever, we need to feel connected to each other. And I have to say, over the past couple of months, we have certainly found new ways to connect. It's incredible, isn't it? Tish, you were telling me a little bit before we were on that Girl Scout troops are being creative in more ways than ever as far as ways of staying connected. Yes, they are. It's, it's a difficult time for all of us right now, but the Girl Scout motto is to always be prepared. And as a previous version of the Girl Scout handbook explained, a Girl Scout is ready to help out whenever she's needed. Willingness to serve is not enough. You must know how to do the job well, even in an emergency. Now, I don't know if any of us quite envision being prepared for this, but every single girl, volunteer, family member, and staff member has risen to the occasion. And for that, I wanna say thank you to all of you at home. And I also wanna share that Girl Scouts is still here to support you and our girls no matter what. As you may have seen during this live stream, we've gotten pretty tech savvy here at Girl Scouts recently. And since March, our program team has worked tirelessly to bring virtual programming to our girls. I actually tuned in to one of those programs and there was actually hundreds of other people online too. How would you say the first couple months of programming has been going, Tish? Well, it's certainly shocking to see the numbers in those first events. In our first week of virtual programming, over 6,000 people viewed our online session. But that just goes to show our Girl Scouts still need us. And that's why Girl Scouts is always going to be there for our girls. Even if it's online, we can still help girls explore their local watershed or have a camp sing-along. A few weeks ago, one troop held a virtual meeting and at the end they sang make new friends like they normally do. But usually they stand in a circle and cross arms and hold hands, but this time the girls found a new way to link arms from their own homes. And actually, I think we have a clip from that very meeting. It 
<laughs> That's just the cutest thing ever. I loved how she kept looking at the camera. It just really melts your heart. It's so great to see that Girl Scouts have a place where they can learn and have fun even now. We know that girls need Girl Scouts right now. In a time of such instability, they need ways to have agency. Girls need to feel like they can make the world a better place and be a force for good. That's why Girl Scouts also launched the Cookies for a Cause program last month. And even if girls can't physically sell cookies during this time, they're still able to earn proceeds for their troop by virtually selling cookies that are then donated to those in need, such as our first responders. And since the beginning of the program, girls have already sold more than 3,200 boxes of cookies. 3,200, that's a lot of cookies. Even though we're apart right now, girls are still bringing families together. And we have a short video of how Girl Scouts River Valleys and the girls in our community are acting for a force for good. Let's take a look at that. Girl Scouts is never canceled. The sisterhood continues. I'm just so glad those girls have the ability to do all those wonderful things through Girl Scouts even now. Absolutely, Roxanne. Now, before we move on, I'd like to take a moment to thank some incredibly generous corporations, organizations, and individuals that made tonight possible. These people have never wavered in their support of Girl Scouts. Also, we'd like to say thank you to our Women of Distinction Chair, Melissa Myers of Anderson Windows, who has been a fearless leader and helped us continue to be trailblazers through this online program tonight. We say thank you. We also invite you to give to Girl Scouts tonight, and now more than ever, it's critical that our girls have that all-girl support that they need. And Tish, I think you have a special announcement you'd like to share? Oh, I do. I've been consistently inspired by our community's generosity during these turbulent times. And one person that has truly stepped up is one of our board members, Norma Porter. Norma's mother, Dolores E. Lewis, was a proud Girl Scout for life. And like so many of us, 
Even when Dolores graduated high school, she never left Girl Scouting behind. And over the years, Dolores dedicated herself to the Girl Scout mission as a troop leader, a council trainer, and board member of the Iowa Girl Scout Council. In honor of her mother and on behalf of our 28,000 girls during this time of crisis, Norma has made an incredible $20,000 gift to Girl Scouts tonight. And you know what? Many of our other board members were so inspired by Norma and her mother, Dolores, that they matched her gift. Thank you to those generous board members who made a gift in honor of Girl Scouts and the women and girls in their lives. And I'm so honored to share an amazing opportunity tonight. Because of these gifts that I just mentioned, and along with the generosity of anonymous donors, we're able to match every single gift made here tonight and triple the impact for Girl Scouts. Triple, that's just incredible. How can people make a gift? Well, you can go to our website at girlscoutsrv.org and click on the donate button. And you can also find the donate link in the video description. Thank you, Tish. Now let's take a moment to meet some of the young women we're here to support tonight. I'm thrilled to be able to introduce to you two young women of distinction whose leadership is needed now more than ever. I had the honor of chatting earlier this week with Huda Abadi and got an update on what she's been up to in recent months. Eighteen-year-old Huda Abadi's family came to the United States when she was just eight months old. Huda says she knew from a very young age she had a voice. Oh, I've always been a talker. I have three sisters and my amazing mom. I hope she's watching this. <laughs> they've always been relatively adamant on making sure that I speak on what matters to me. Which is precisely what Huda did in 2018 when she testified at the state capitol on behalf of the Girl Scouts. It was really eye-opening. It's almost made me cynical in a way because I no longer want to go to rallies and protest just to protest, but let's also contact our elected officials and get a meeting together and some sort of proposal so we can actually do something. Did you arrive at this by yourself or did you have help? No, I mean, it takes a village to raise a child. Yes. <laughs> so, and a troop to raise a Girl Scout. There you go. Girl Scouts has been a really big part of that process, giving me the access to the strong female role models. When I was little, I wanted to be a Girl Scout, but I figured it was something that I couldn't do. And Girl Scouts came along in my sixth grade year and was like, no, you can be a part of Girl Scouts as well. Access for me, is always the word that rings true to Girl Scouts Connects. Huda is a senior at John Marshall High School and a post-secondary enrollment option student at Rochester Community Technical College, where she serves as vice president of the Student Senate. As a senior, I'm applying to colleges, and I actually know something about the universities and colleges that I want to go to. I always talk about higher education because a lot of my troop leaders really push me with that. Girl Scouts, got rid of that roadblock for me and said, here's the way, you just need to take it. And I think you grabbed it by the horn and ran. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Huda, hey. it's great to see you. It's been a while since our day at the Capitol together. How are you? I'm doing well. It has been a while, but I hope we're both keeping up. Good. Are you staying healthy? That's the hope, especially with the virus going yeah. around. You know, this. no one, of course, could have predicted that something like this ha would happen on this magnitude. And as a senior in high school and a PSEO student, I, I know that there are big plans for you this spring and into the fall. How, how are you pivoting this spring uh, with the changes in school? Um, the main thing has been the transition from um, in-person learning to online learning, you know, adjusting to online classes and different settings that I wasn't, you know, immersed in prior. Um, also coming to the realization that I might not have the full senior experience, you know, missing out on things like prom and graduation, which are really important. But 
I know that I'll be celebrated in other ways, such as this program. And I know that my accomplishments are going to be forever embedded, whether or not I have a graduation. That is an awesome attitude. And I I love that phrase. I know that I'll be celebrated in other ways. That's very true. You're being celebrated as a young woman of distinction. How much of that positive attitude did you learn while being a Girl Scout? And what else have you learned as a Girl Scout that's helped you cope with something on this scale? Well, as a Girl Scout, we talk a lot about our emotions and feelings. And you know, we kind of emphasize that keeping a positive attitude, that being optimistic, because the moment you kind of slip into a negative thinking rut, you find yourself having a lot of mental blockages, completing work and completing daily activities. I know it's hard when a pandemic of this size is occurring. It's hard not to, you know, be pessimistic, but the more optimistic you are, you find the easier it is to continue on with daily life. And getting that kind of positive attitude from Girl Scouts has really helped me in maintaining it now and pushing forward with all the struggles and blockages in the way, but also seeing all the positive that's coming out of it. Mm-hmm. Speaking of uh, paying it forward, what's next for you? I know that you have big plans for the fall. Yeah. So I'm planning to do another year in community college as a financial decision. And then hopefully transferring to University of Minnesota or a university in Texas. Um, My hope is to double major in education and social work and hopefully work in the actual district of which I grew up in. Because I think our school districts need a change and the school system needs change. Well, whether you head to Texas or the University of Minnesota, I know that you'll be a rock star. If you go to the U, we'll be fellow alumni. That's my alma mater as well. But I I know that you're going to do great things. You have a great uh, sense of community and helping and serving others. And I just wish you all the very best, Tuta. You're going to do great. Aren't you inspired by Huda? Again, I know you're at home, but feel free to clap. Send a GIF or react in the comments. Let's show these girls some love. Everyone, let's take a few minutes to get to know our second young woman of distinction, Sahana Vanduyar. Maple Grove High School senior Sahana Vandiyar is a high-energy, natural-born leader who understands the power of collaboration. She's her school's first female outreach captain, Dean's List finalist, and robotics team drive coach. We have people that work on our drivetrain. We have people that worked on just the specific arm. Um, but it, the beauty of it is that we all come together to make it work, to make Remy uh, alive. You discovered your love for science. Mm-hmm as a brownie. I did. I think it really came down to me just seeing, you know, the chemical reactions take place. Or later, as I began to take engineering classes, see how different elements come together to make a holistic project. It comes back down to that Girl Scout meeting is where I sort of realized, like, it doesn't have to be a male thing. Sahana now serves on the Girl Scouts of River Valley's Girl Leadership Board as a science, technology, and engineering math leader. How is what you're seeing and what you're believing changed? as a result of you being a Girl Scout? Oh, it's been a day and night difference. The Girl Scouts has done such a great job with showing STEM initiatives and STEM projects. I don't think I would have gone into STEM if it, if it wasn't for Girl Scouts because Girl Scouts allowed me to, to really discover that passion for STEM in a girl-led environment. And she continues to pay it forward. For her gold award, Sahana created a nonprofit called Computer Science for Kids. It was really fun actually being able to train high school mentors in Singapore and train mentors here on my own robotics team. And this was so cool because I was able to integrate both of my passions, which is like Girl Scouts and robotics. And I got to do it under Girl Scouts, which I think was like the coolest thing ever. I think the thing that's most impressive to me is when you were describing the Remy. Yeah. That it's such a collaborative effort. Is, yeah. it, a robot can't happen unless we have every single person on the team come together. And it's not just an element of one person leading the team, but rather how do all of us as leaders come together to make it happen. It's really cool to incorporate Girl Scouts and STEM because these are my two biggest things that I care about in life. So having that combination of the two is just it's more than I could ask for. Beautiful. That was a good one. Hey, 
Sahana, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Roxanne? Great. I expected you to be wearing red because that's, you know, the whole, the oh, yes. robotics crew out at Maple Grove. I'm representing my robotics team. I decided to change it up with some blue today. Well you, well, you look great. How are you doing? I know this was a real big time of year for you with the, you know, you're a senior, you're graduating, and, you know, the competitions with the robot and all of that. How are you making the pivot? It definitely has been a tough transition. I mean, this is one of the years that I think a lot of people look forward to is their senior year, saying goodbye to, you know, your childhood and then not being able to, not being able to attend prom and do all the classic high school things has definitely been tough. But I think one of the coolest things is really seeing how my community community has come together. Uh, amidst all this. I've never been so grateful for the internet and social media. Sure, <laughs> yeah. Insane. And it allows me to, to keep in contact with my teachers and my friends and the fellow peers that I've grown up with. But um, that's probably the biggest advantage, I think, I miss on all of this. Right. So you found a way. You found a way to adjust like a lot of us virtually, like you and I talking virtually as opposed to when we were at the school together. How has mm-hmm. the Girl Scouts, how is being a Girl Scout? Because as we saw, you're a lifelong Girl Scout, what, since like you were a brownie in the third grade. Yes. How has Girl grade, Scouts yeah. prepared you for this time, for these transitions, for these moments when we have to adjust? Yeah. So one thing I've definitely learned through Girl Scouts is um, always be prepared for the situations that don't go your way. Um, uh, evidently, I mean, this whole situation is something globally that no one expected or no one really saw coming to the extent that it has been. Um, but the one thing I've really learned in Girl Scouts is sort of how to maneuver, stay calm in the situation that you're in because it will get better and there will be a silver lining. Um, so even though I'm not able to see the people that I want to, I'm still able to stay in contact virtually. Like you said, like we're doing right now, um, so it's definitely been the biggest thing is keeping me sane. Uh, Girl Scouts have really done a good job of that. When we visited at the sc- at your school, you were on the fence about what college you wanted to go to. Have you made a decision? What's next for you, Sahana? I did. This fall, I'll be attending Northwestern University in Illinois to study computer science. Congrats. Thank you. <laughs> and so... I know that the end of the year, seniors sort of celebrate those kind of traditions or decisions. What are you doing to celebrate the the fact that you're going on to college in the fall? Definitely. So traditionally, May 1st is what we call Decision Day, which is where seniors celebrate by repping the merch of whatever school they're going to. And since we can't do that with all of our friends in life, in like real life at school, um, my school and a couple friends of mine and I have decided to come up with a decision day page where we actually post different students and all our peers um, and they each get a post sort of describing where they're, where they're going, what they're wearing, um, what they're choosing to major in. Um, and I think that's been a really, really cool way to see sort of the community come together um, even if it has to be. That's going to be a lot of fun, that, catching up with everybody online. And, you know, you're a rock star, Sahana. I'm going to tell the whole world I knew you win. <laughs> I wish you all <laughs> the best you so with everything. Much. It was nice seeing you again, Roxanne. All right. Take good care. You too. Everyone at home, let's give one more virtual round of applause to our young women of distinction. And now we have some incredible news Because of the generous gift from Wendy and Paul Unglub, Girl Scouts River Valleys is thrilled to be able to provide each of our young women of distinction with a $1,000 scholarship to continue their education next year. Thank you, Roxanne. And thank you, Huda and Sahana, for your amazing contributions to Girl Scouting and to your community. And you know what? There are so many girls, just like Huda and Sahana, that are inspiring their families, their peers, and their communities. Thank you to all those girls who are living the Girl Scout mission. Now, just as a reminder, your generous gifts tonight will support these girls like Huda and Sahana and will be matched to triple your impact. That's right. Your generous gift of $100, Girl Scouts River Valleys will receive $300 if you give a gift of $25, $25, Girl Scouts River Valleys receives $75. And we've made it easy for you to give. We've created a link pinned in the comments that you can go to after the program to make your generous gift. Now, we have some incredible women who we are honoring tonight. Speaking up for what's right. Helping out when things go wrong. 
raising our voices alone or together. Not just breaking news, but breaking barriers. Fighting for victory on the battlefield and on the playing field. Seeing the world through new eyes and the earth from miles above. Redefining beauty, brains, and what it really means to be queen. Making ourselves heard on stage and on screen. Showing the way in Silicon Valley and showing up for others wherever help is needed most. Not just making our mark, but making a difference. Now that's a job for a Girl Scout. Girl Scouts, preparing girls for a lifetime of leadership. Wow, that's incredible. Welcome back. We have a special introduction from board chair, Gail Hayhurst. Let's roll that clip. Hi, I'm Gail Hayhurst, board chair of the Girl Scouts of River Valleys. I am thrilled to be here with you tonight as we honor our 2020 Women of Distinction, Amy Kroll, Laura Reed, Ashley McRae, and Jay Shree Sait. In a moment, you'll hear directly from these women as they share their inspiring leadership stories and they demonstrate their commitment to our communities. And I think that now more than ever, commitment to our communities is something to be celebrated. Thank you, 2020 Women of Distinction and Young Women of Distinction honorees for all that you do to be a force for good. Jay Shree Sait is an inventor, a corporate scientist who has collaborated on 67 different patents, including tape that helps make life more comfortable for a baby. One of four women and the only woman engineer ever inducted into 3M's Carleton Society Hall of Fame. She's also 3M's first ever chief science advocate who travels the world. Thank you, Jay Shree, for being a 2020 Woman of Distinction. Jay Shree, it's great to see you again. Are you well? Yes. Hi, Roxanne. How are you? I'm doing well. And your family, everybody's okay? Yes, thank you. Well, it's really good to see you again. Little did we know that when I visited you in your office that we were just ahead of the social distancing, and here we are virtual. And 3M has played a huge role in responding to the COVID-19 pandemic. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, when you came to 3M, I told you how incredibly proud I am to be a 3Mer for 27 years. I couldn't be prouder seeing our response to this pandemic. We have doubled the uh, production of respirators. We have made sure that the respirators are directed to where people need them. We've also worked with other companies to collaborate and find solutions. We're working with the government and other organizations to make sure uh, that people who need the respirators get those. We're also fighting price gouging and fraud out there. Uh, and then our CEO, Mike Roman, recently also announced that we're donating $20 million uh, for uh, people who need it, uh, vulnerable populations, also frontline workers and medical researchers who are working on a, a cure for this uh, oh. pandemic. So uh, just incredibly proud of what 3M has done and also grateful to the uh, co-workers who are working 24-7 to uh, ramp up production. That's just an incredible list of contributions and a uh, response from 3M in this time. I mean, that's like the definition of a force for good. How are you as a leader, Jay Shree, how are you being a force for good? Well, first and foremost, by staying home. Yes. Um, social distancing protocols are being followed. And, you know, this individual act is actually an act of collective good because it's not just about our health it's also about the health of the community um, and sending a message of solidarity of hope and of uh, uh, gratitude to those who are on the front lines what we're also doing is uh, continuing with a lot of our events on science advocacy so this is the time 
to show how important science is, more important than ever before. And so we have had many remote events, uh, webinars and things like that, external as well as internal to 3M. I'm also actually moderating a panel on community COVID uh, conversations, which is being hosted by the American Heart Association next week. So trying to help wherever I can. And the one that I'm super excited about is what we have done uh, with our Science at Home series that we have just launched. See, we we are home, but so are over 50 million students in the U.S. And now that there's distance learning, we thought with our strong history of support for STEM education, why don't we do something for science at home? So what myself and a few of my uh, other scientists, co-workers at 3M, we are doing simple experiments using household materials and we record ourselves. And these videos of these experiments that actually reinforce core scientific principles are available for educators and teachers and families and students to use. It's a lot of fun. You should check it out. Yeah. It's at 3M.com slash science at home. And it's force for good. It's good for fun and fun to learn. Wow. Well, that's amazing, Jay Shree. As a corporate scientist, as a chief science advocate, and now as a 2020 Woman of Distinction, congratulations, Jay Shree. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so grateful. I wish you all the best and take good care. Thanks. And now, our next 2020 Woman of Distinction honoree. As Chief Nurse Executive and Operations Officer for M Health Fairview, Laura Reed is a leadership voice at the University of Minnesota Medical Center and nearly a dozen community-based hospitals, specialty clinics, and care facilities. It's a two-fold leadership role that requires both head and heart. Thank you, Laura, for being a 2020 Woman of Distinction. Hello, Laura. It's so great to see you again. It's wonderful to see you, even though it's not in person, it's right. great to see you. Yeah, this virtual world is a reality for all of us. You're well, you're healthy and well. Yes, yes. really appreciative of that, you know, yes. with everything going on, my whole family as well. That's wonderful. It's a great thing. As chief nurse executive and CEO, COO of M Health Fairview, you've got dozens of hospitals on the front line of the COVID mm -hmm. response. How are you leading your team through this response? I actually heard something about Lizzo and lunch. Yeah, yeah. What a wonderful surprise. I mean, it was, uh, it was an incredibly generous and uh, fantastic effort for our team at Bethesda. Um, and it was just really, really great. Uh, we've seen all kinds of generosity from all kinds of walks of life. And it just gives our healthcare team um, a real inspiration to continue to do what they're doing. And it's, it's been fabulous. Mm -hmm. No one obviously could have anticipated the times that we're in right now. And I suspect mm -hmm. that it sort of calls upon your leadership in a way that you hadn't imagined. Mm -hmm. How are you being a force for good, Laura? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, it's not really, it isn't just me about being a force for good. It really is our entire team. I, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate the way that they have all stepped up and and behaved in these, you know, what people call unprecedented times. It's it's exactly true. There there is no map. There is no um, exact path that we know we need to do. And yet, we are absolutely more committed than ever to our mission and our passion of treating our patients and families and our community well and and being really good and gentle with each other. It's uh, it's been it's been remarkable, actually. And I feel like my job is to get out of their way, allow them to do great work and uh, to ensure that we continue to inspire optimism and confidence that we are not only going to get through this, we are just going to really shine brightly as a health system and, and really serve our community in ways that we never thought we could. Uh, it's it's been great. Yeah, we will get through this, and, and give, given those lessons, we'll all be better on the other side. It's a hope. Laura, yes, I wanna absolutely. I want to congratulate you on being a 2020 Woman of Distinction, and I wish you continued good health and all the best. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything, and thank you to the Girl Scouts. It, it's been a wonderful honor. And now, our next 2020 Woman of Distinction. 
As a principal at Deloitte with more than 20 years of risk management experience, Amy Kroll helps clients all over the country solve tough problems. Never one to shy away from a challenge, Amy says growing up in a family that embraced all aspects of life helped shape her approach as a leader. Thank you, Amy, for being a 2020 Woman of Distinction. Hello, Amy. It's really great to see you again. I hope you and your family are well. I am, Roxanne, and hello. It's great to see you. Um, we're well. I hope your family is well. And, and again, thank you for everything you've done for the Girl Scouts and Women of Distinction. Wow. Well, it's my honor and my pleasure. I really did enjoy visiting with you the, in person the, the day we were able to visit in your offices at Deloitte. You know, at that time, you talked a little bit about your job, about you know troubleshooting and having a career in risk management, and also being a lifelong Girl Scout, a former board chair of the Girl Scouts. I want to read to you something you probably know very well, and probably by heart, but it's the Girl Scout motto that says, a Girl Scout is ready to help out wherever she is needed. Willingness to serve is not enough. You must know how to do the job well, even in an emergency. And given these unprecedented times that we're in, Amy, how has the Girl Scouts prepared you to lead at this moment? Yeah, we talk a lot every day about, in the business we do, um, you know, things like trustworthy, secure, and resilient. And resilience has taken on a whole new meaning for us um, every day in the work that we do with our clients. And I think the Girl Scout model motto embodies so much of those same attributes. Um, character and resilience um, is something that we find ourselves in the middle of um, um, putting to good use every single day. And being, being able to adjust and pivot and go to virtual versus in person. And so it's something that I'm sure we'll be seeing more of in the, in the health and care industry as well. Yep, absolutely. How, Amy, are you as a leader, being a force for good. I love that phrase. I love the fact that the Girl Scouts um, have used that um, in one of the most challenging times that we've found ourselves in. And I wake up every day and I think it's a way just to frame your day, to frame your interactions, to help yourself be a force for good. How do I help others be a force for good? Um, and sometimes those things are really meaningful in any given day and sometimes it's the it's the little things you do for others for your teams for your clients um and we are working really hard i try to make sure we are as invested in that as possible and my teams know um that we're here to be a force for good well, Amy, I want to congratulate you on being a 2020 Woman of Distinction. It's been a pleasure chatting with you, and I wish you and your family continued good health. Thank you, Roxanne. It truly is an honor to be here with these women today, and um, I really appreciate it. It was great to visit with you. And now, our next 2020 Woman of Distinction honoree. At just 27, Ashley McCray has six years under her belt at General Mills and is the mind behind some of the company's most popular brands. In addition to her day job, Ashley often speaks about the need for more diversity in engineering fields. Named one of 50 women in business by the Minneapolis St. Paul Business Journal, Ashley has also been recognized by the National Society of Black Engineers. Thank you, Ashley, for being a 2020 Woman of Distinction. Hey, Ashley, great to see you. How are you? I'm so well. How are you doing, Roxanne? Good, good. I mean, we had a great time visiting out at General Mills. Who knew we were just ahead of the social distancing? But I really did have a great time visiting with you at your office and hanging out at the store down there. Um, at that point in time, when we visited in person, you shared some very exciting news with me about your plans for the fall. Yes, I have really exciting news. I am continuing my education and going back to business school. So in the fall, me and my partner, we're moving to Boston, where I will be attending Harvard Business School. Congratulations. You mean you and your fiancé? Yes, my fiancé. <laughs> Oh, Ashley's world, is, there's lots of wonderful things happening in Ashley's world right now in the middle of all this, but not to make light of the times that we're in. 
One of the things that I believe is compelling you, based on our conversations, to go back to school is to, to have that sort of flexibility to be able to respond culturally and socially where you feel you can, where you can meet the need. Is that part of the motivation for you for, to go back to school? Definitely. Something that has really shown to be evident during this time is that change is inevitable. And what really is really showcasing the good from the great is how we navigating that change. And I think that is what school and continuously education and growing your perspective and your exposure to how to handle situations, especially situations we've never seen before, mm -hmm. is really changing the way that things are playing out. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to go back to school, one of the best business schools in the world, to learn how to not only navigate change, but how do you predict change? How do you take the learnings from the past and create a better future? So my hope is that these next two years, in addition to having real Boston clam chowder and seeing what the hype is about the Patriots. Um, I am taking away actual nuggets that I can bring back to my community that can really invoke how we can continuously keep changing and make that change positive. I have no doubt that you will do that and more. And I'm a big uh, clam chowder fan as well. Um, <laughs> Ashley, how do you define being a force for good for you? What does that mean as a leader? What does that mean for Ashley being a force for good? A force for good for me means a constant pulse check of the why. So every action, every conversation, every step that I take, checking in with myself and it's like, is this going to leave a positive impact on a person, on a situation, and ultimately on the world? Because a force for good isn't just a saying, it's a way of life. And for me, I currently work so hard to make sure that I'm putting nothing but positive energy in the world by me taking a next step to grow myself further is ultimately like, how can I magnify that commitment to a force for good? So that it's not just what am I doing on a Tuesday? How am I donating to make something better? But how am I creating and empowering everyone to see a force for good instead of a choice, mm -hmm. but as a lifestyle and the baseline of what we all do every single day. Mm -hmm. And one thing I want you to promise me when you head out to school in the fall is don't ever change. Oh, I couldn't change if I wanted to. Who, Roxanne? <laughs> I've, I've gotten too many years on this planet of being um, the person that I am today, uh, the nerd, the problem solver, the engineer, the inquisitive person that can always find, find another question or ask why. Uh, I wish I could change. Actually, I don't, no, because I think being who you are is essential to what makes our world so great. It's the best gift you can give yourself, and it's the best gift that you can give us. Ashley McCray, 2020 Woman of Distinction. It's been a delight chatting with you, both virtually and in person. Please stay in touch, and congratulations. Thank you so much, Roxanne. And I will always stay in touch. Girl Scouts, it runs through my blood. Take care, Ashley. Congratulations to all of our 2020 Women of Distinction. We are so lucky to have such incredible women in our community who are leading and being a force for good. Again, your gifts tonight will be tripled. After we're done, please follow the link in the video description to Girl Scouts River Valley's website and give generously. If you're tech savvy and would like to open up another window right now, you can give right now. Please do so, but also please come back to the program and join us. We're just about at the end of the program. We've got a few more moments left. Your photos, your comments, your reactions have been so uplifting, and I love seeing how our community is coming together virtually this evening. And I, I think tonight has shown that Girl Scouts River Valleys is here for you. Once again, here's our CEO, Tish Bolger. If there's one message that I want to convey to the girls and families listening at home tonight, it's that we're here for you, and we will always be here for you, and I really do mean that. At the beginning of the year, oh my gosh, at really the beginning of the month, I don't know that any of us could have seen where we would be now, but let me share with you why we're gonna get through this. 
the motto of tonight's event is invest in girls, change the world, and be a force for good. And we chose that motto because that's exactly what we're seeing in our girls and our women right now. We're seeing that our Girl Scouts are a force for good. No matter what the circumstances, no matter what time they live in, we see Girl Scouts cleaning up walking paths so that others in their community can still enjoy the outdoors while we're social distancing. And we see Girl Scouts making care packages with art supplies for their neighbors. We see girls selling cookies virtually so that they can support our first responders. I won't beat around the bush. This is a time of struggle for many people in our communities. For girls who already face disparities, such as racism or economic hardship, this time is incredibly difficult. That's why Girl Scouts Connects, our program that brings culturally relevant Girl Scouting to over 3,000 girls with diverse backgrounds, is making sure that girls are safe and connected during this time. One Connects troop leader used program supply funds to send groceries to her girls, walk them through how to make a dish, and then discussed how to maintain healthy eating habits during this time. It may seem like we're apart, but in reality, we are as close as always. Even if it looks a bit different than it did before, Girl Scouts are still working together, learning together and having fun together, and making the world a better place together. And that's why Girl Scouts is so critical right now. That's why we're all here tonight. No matter what, Girl Scouts is here for every girl. We're here for support, for connection, for opportunity, always. The other week I heard a story from one of our parents, a mother of a young Girl Scout brownie. That mom walked into her daughter's room before bedtime one night and found that over her pajamas, her daughter was wearing her Girl Scout uniform. And when asked why, her daughter said, it makes me feel safe. It makes me feel brave and I know everything's gonna be okay. Now I tear up every time I think about that because I really took it to heart. Girl Scouts is keeping girls brave. It's keeping people connected. And right now I wanna echo that message to all of us. Let's stay brave, let's stay connected and support one another. Let's invest in girls and let's change the world. Tonight, let us be a force for good together. I ask you to donate to Girl Scouts tonight and remember that your investment is not just being doubled, but being tripled. Your voice, your investment in girls is being amplified when it's needed most. We're stronger together and we will keep working together to make sure that every girl feels strong and that every girl feels brave. Thank you, Tish. We are all in this together. All of the funds we raise tonight are going to support girls like Huda and Sahana and every other one of the 28,000 girls who needs Girl Scouts now more than ever. So now as we sign off, I invite you to go to Girl Scouts River Valley's website at girlscoutsrv.org and give. Your gifts will ensure that all Girl Scouts will have access to the girl-led, girl-run programming they need. We are here together, and we are here to support girls no matter what. No matter what is exactly right, Roxanne. And thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thank you, Tish. Thank you for every one of our volunteers, every one of our members, the amazing women and young women of distinction, and every one of our girls. You're the reason we're here tonight, and the Girl Scouts can be a force for good for years to come. Thank you, stay safe, and have a wonderful rest of your night. Be safe, thank you, and good night.